Secure guys. Get to the wide of the abyssum. Kia now my hockey, my key tea, rugby connection presents the final whistle, Kota, Matau, Manahiri, Kota, Tama, Tini, Pai, A, Waikato, two-time Commonwealth gold medalist, two-time Super Rugby champion and 2015 Rugby World Cup winner. To top it all off, he could punch your lights out in a boxing ring. It's Liam Messam. Liam, thank you so much for coming on. How are you getting on? No worries, mate. What an introduction. How good. Please tell me you understood the first bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understood, bro, I understood. That's fine, because the last time I did it, it, last time I did it, it didn't work, so. <laughs> nah, nah, that was perfect, bro. Yes, we finally got it. Now, what we usually do, we ask, our, the first question is, what got you into rugby? But because you're from New Zealand, it's kind of born into it. So when did you know rugby could be a career? Um. Oh, I actually wasn't. Um, born into me because I played uh, football um, starting off and played it till about 12 years old and then uh, I was with my mates one day to rugby training took me out from home and yeah, never, never looked back ever since so I was a bit of a well, you call it a late bloomer here in New Zealand to um, to play rugby um, football was my first first sort of um, sport that I played um, and then there yeah, wasn't until about 15 15 or 16 years old it was actually my mother. My mum said that uh, I won some award over in Australia um, for play of the tournament or whatnot. And I came home and mum was like, oh, you're pretty good at this game. You can uh, you can turn it into a career. And she knows nothing about rugby. So um, yeah, that's where I sort of thought, you know, I could take it seriously and, and got stuck into it. Fair enough. What position were you in football? Just Oh, uh, I was a goalie. <laughs> oh, nice. Fair enough. I wasn't a bad goalie. I stopped, I stopped a few goals. Um, but yeah, I just yeah, my own my old man's from uh, from Bristol, um, up there in England. So um, all our all our kids played um, all my brothers and well, not my sisters, but most of my brothers played football growing up. So um, yeah, just my mates picked me up one day, and I was a bit bigger than everyone else, you know, playing football. So it's good to, to get around and smash. Yeah, them. you picked, you made the right decision anyway because rugby is so much better than football. So well, football plays way more. So if you could get. Football's wedges with rugby's sport. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> um, Was it hard to transition from being a sevens player to, to a fifteens player? Uh, back then, yep, 100%. The game was a lot different to what it is now. Um, if I was trying to trans- transition into fifteens like, as the game is now, I think it would be a lot easier. The game's a lot more open. Um it's, accept, it's acceptable for forwards to run around in the back line or out on the wide channels. Uh, when I first started, um, you know, I used to get a, a lot of comments about how I used to stand in the back line or stay out on the wide channels to try and run with the ball. Um, so it was hard to try and change people's uh, perception, I guess, of, of the way I try to play rugby. Um, and I worked hard to, to sort of, especially get my body right. Um, I would fluctuate from about 100, 101 kgs playing sevens and I had to get to about 108, 110 playing 15. So, um yeah, it was tough to try and uh, convince people, but I just loved the, the game of sevens. I um, mean, it was hard for me to like, you know, just focus on on fifteens when I really had one, you know, you know, half a league in, in the in the sevens camp. I was just going to ask, what actually led you to going like leaning more towards fifteens than sticking at sevens? Um, oh, probably Gordon Titchens and Eric Rush. Their their big uh, philosophy or their big thing was like um, trying to get players into the All Blacks. Um, even though it was awesome to have them in the sevens, um, seven scene in, in the circuit, um, they were always trying to push and promote for players to, to for higher honours. And obviously, that's fifteen Super Rugby then in, into the All Blacks. So um, I remember Eric Rush uh, sending me out of the New Zealand sevens camp to go play New Zealand under twenty ones. I think it was. I don't want to go play. I wanted to continue on in the World Series. Um, and pretty much got volunteered to uh, to go and play uh, under twenties uh, under twenty ones World Cup um, back in fifteen. So. Ah uh, yeah, in that environment, they're always trying to push for for higher honours. That's I don't know if I agree with the push part. I don't know. I feel like it should be up to the player. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Well, I guess because the sevens is a, a lot different uh, to now to what it was back then. You know, they've got specialist sevens players and it's a specialist mm. role. Uh, back then, we had guys chopping and changing, um, playing 15s, um, going to the big sevens competitions, going back and forth. So uh, I'm not sure when they changed the, the ruling about just having specialist sevens players. Um, but yeah, sort of back then, it was everyone sort of used the sevens as a stepping stone. Um, and for me, it was to develop my game, um, develop my running, um, my defense, and my leadership. So um, I've got a lot to pay for the sevens. Um, they sort of, or they have, you know, they paved the way for for me to, for my career where I've had, and they gave me a really strong foundation, foundation and um, and work ethic and, and what hard work looked like and where it could get you. Uh, so yeah, I've got a lot to pay um, for the sevens for the sevens team. I love that. I mean, yeah, you mentioned the work ethic there. Your work rate was phenomenal. It's, at that time, it was the first, you were one of the first players I proper noticed. Like he's everywhere. Did somebody stop him, please. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's again. That just comes down to the um, the the Sevens Foundations that I had. I, I was lucky enough when I was 16 years old to to be invited to um, you know, my first New Zealand Sevens camp, um, and that was a real eye opener to me. Um, it was a shock to the body, to the system. I was the, a chubby kid. Uh, I used to love my pies and and cokes and, and fish and chips, and uh, didn't work hard, didn't train hard, didn't know what training hard looked like. Or you know, I just turn up on Saturday and just play rugby with my mates and then yeah it wasn't until I went to that camp and realized um and Titch actually sat me down um because I was terrible I came last and pretty well much to fitness um levels and, and testing and whatnot and he pretty much sat me down and said if, if I was fit enough I would have been in that team for that year and I was just a 16 year old kid and I was like what so that sort of sparked a, a fire inside of me and I just uh went hard just trained hard from from that day on um worked really hard um yeah I, was, I was sort of um, I try and pride myself on, on my work ethic and, and how hard I work and, and still to this day even uh, at this tender age of 38 I still try and outwork the boys in the gym or on, on the field uh, a bit of a competition uh, just keep me on my toes I mean 38 you're like age like a fine wine wheel so you have <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh, a, lot, a lot of people say that I, I like to call it as the uh, um, Kubota Kubota what's it the uh, yeah Kubota um, diesel engine the old tractor yeah, or, just or John Deere, as some people have. That's John Deere's a bit flash. So the, the Kubota, I think, the, yeah, the Kubota, uh, Kubota um, lawn mowing diesel <laughs> engine. That's what I like to call myself. Just just keeps going. Yeah, it just keeps going. Doesn't go very oh. fast, but just keeps going. Well, doesn't matter about the speed, it's about, about if it doesn't go, that's all. <laughs> um, I did read, and now I hope this was true. Do you have Scottish heritage? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I do actually. I actually, I don't know where um, in Scotland I'm from, or is it a clan? Okay. There would have been there. There would have been clans. Yeah. Yeah. Call me a clan. Clan. So, uh, my um, birth mother, she was Scottish. Well, it's Scottish okay. heritage. So, I just tell everyone I'm, I'm part of William Wallace's family. Uh, yeah, we we do that when we're on holiday as well. <laughs> you, get, you do get. We get asked that a lot, Mike. Like, I think my dad actually told the shop owner that, oh yeah, William Wallace is my dad. And I'm like, really? No, he's like 500 years <laughs> older. <laughs> Obviously not. But it's amazing how many people actually believe that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the reason I asked is because I'm actually going to flip it now. I, obviously I'm Scottish, but I have Maori heritage. So, yeah, maybe we're related. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe. Who knows, Maybe. eh? <laughs> a small world. So, it is a small world. It's smaller than you think. Speaking of that, just because you've worded it perfectly, one of our former guests, I'm not going to say who, you have to guess in a minute, knows you very, very well, and then asked you to take your teeth out or take your tooth out. <laughs> it's actually, um, I've got to fix it. It uh, doesn't, doesn't happen anymore. Uh, I'm guessing well, it's probably Jerome or someone. It's not, it. it's not Jerome K, no, no. Nah. I'll give you one more guess and I'll tell you who it is. Matt? No. Oh, but what a dream that would have been. No, it was, uh, it was uh, Richard Cahoo. Oh. <laughs> the pretty boy. I did that. I was like, look, you know Liam. Is there anything you want to mention? Is it, yeah, get him to t- 
get his tooth out. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, okay, we'll see how that goes. But it's fixed. But it's all sorted. It's fixed now. It's all fixed now. It's all sorted. So I figured there was a but. I'm guessing he's lost it during a game or something. Yeah, it was actually, I was 15 years old trialling for the New Zealand uh, under-16s team. Mm-hmm. Um, I made a bit of a line break. I was say a bit about eight people. Step here, left the foot there. Done this. Uh, went to go beat the defender. I think it might have been a two-on-one draw and pass, but I was a bit really back at high school. Yeah. With the dummy and uh, just straight head-on-head collision with the um, with the fullback. And uh, my tooth actually didn't fall out. It actually just went, bent right back into, into my... Uh, back of my gum and then went to the dentist um, the dentist said oh we can fix it but you won't better play um, against Australia that following week and me being 15 playing my first time for the New Zealand team I was like nah rip it out we go so I ripped <laughs> it out and yeah if I look back now I wish I just got a fix <laughs> <laughs> fair enough um, got, we've got a question from one of our co-hosts Har now he said it would be a straight swap you hand in your 2015 World Cup medal and you become the undisputed boxing heavyweight champion. Would you Would you do it? <laughs> yeah, I would actually. <laughs> I, would. I would. I would. I would. I would be the unit. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I'm gonna stick with the box. I'll, I'll never ever. I'll never ever ever get to that um stage, but to be called like, like imagine being Tyson through. Like he's the man. I was gonna say that you you could fight Tyson. You could either fight for it or you could just get given the belts, and then that is your champion. I don't know. Just give me the belts. <laughs> I'm not gonna be fighting for it. <laughs> well, I won't be enough. fighting for it. Um, I was just about to ask if there's one player that you would love to step in the ring with, who would it be and why? Oh, there's too many. There's too many. Like <laughs> trippy little nine, little halfback. They always used to get on my uh, on my nerve, and I, I wish I could do something about it, but you couldn't. Um, yeah, go for it. Give us names. I'm trying, I'm trying to give you a name, but um, like I, the spring box are always the the way you sort of test yourself physically. Yeah. But there were such nice blokes off the field. You'd be just like, ah, damn it, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just had, I've, I've played against so many players. Oh, actually, um, my good friend Stephen Donald. I'd Beaver, love to get in the ring with Stephen Donald yeah, with Beaver. Fair enough. Just why to slap called... him around. Fair enough. Fair. Why is he yeah. called Beaver? I've always wondered this. Should I actually? Um... It's got something to do with him as a kid. All right. I actually, don't, I actually don't know. This is a great question. I'm going to ask him uh, when I see him next. I actually don't know why he's called Beaver. Just something as a as a kid. We used to call him um, Rex as well, T Rex, Beaver. Um, yeah, not something I'll ask him. It's a good question. I'll get him on the show just to purely ask why is he called Beaver. No <laughs> other question you could ask to Stephen Donald for that one. Just why are you called Beaver? <laughs> um, what's your nicknames if you have any? Oh, my one's uh, Hunger. Uh, so, or oh, it used to be Hungry, and then it's got broken down to Hunger. So H U N G A. Um, and the story behind that is that um, you know, I used to be like really, really strict on my eating. Okay. Um, like I was just, I was, some would call it a little bit crazy. Um, probably was crazy the way I um, looked after myself nutrition wise. Um, like I would eat like boiled chicken and broccoli. I'm um, just like boring, basic, like yeah, crazy stuff. Uh, anyway, when I came up here to work out on my first year, the uh, they always used to take me out for dinner or lunch, knowing that I would, you know, wouldn't eat that kind of food. So I used to sit there, it's like be just hungry the whole whole time we're at, out dinner for lunch. Um, and then yeah, that's sort of how the name came and it's stuck and it's stuck ever since. That's a very unique nickname and an even more yeah, yeah, yeah. for it. I love it. And it, but that's what I love about rugby because nicknames, none of them make any sense in rugby. Nah, nah. Even when you get the story, I'm like, I mean, there's tons of nicknames you could have waited for, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, we were talking about this the other day actually about nicknames and how they stick and how good they are. What what's the favorite nicknames? The ones that stuck out for you then? Um, the ones that stick out for me, we have one at the moment, and now Wakato team is named uh Patrick. Actually, I don't know his last name, so I've always called him by his nickname. But his nickname's John Wick. 
He's a uh, he's a loose forward. Um, okay. He's just a local club player that comes and fills in for us. Um, he's got <laughs> long ginger hair. Um, doesn't look like a footy player, but man, he is a killer. Like he's, I think he's hopefully played his way into a Super Rugby team just from from coming from club rugby. But yeah, we just called him John Wick, and it's stuck ever since. And <laughs> he just keeps going and killing people with pencils. Fair enough. Fair enough. Killing people with pencils. <laughs> Um, obviously, you've just mentioned the Waikato team in the NPC. We don't really have a tournament or competition like that over here. Could you explain to the UK viewers just how important the NPC actually is? Yeah, our NPC is awesome. Um, I love playing it because it's uh, it's not as structured as Super Rugby or or international rugby. Um, Super Rugby seems to be very structured and it's very. All the five teams sort of play the similar style, but with NPC, you get a lot of younger players. Um, they get an opportunity to play. Um, and most teams just play straight out of enjoyment and out of, you know, throwing the ball around and chancing their arm a bit. Um, and they're not scared to make mistakes. And um, this year's NPC has been really, really exciting to watch, um, even for myself. I'm, I'm not a big fan of watching footy, but I've watched a lot of NPC just because of the pure entertainment that, um, that's that been thrown around and, and the way the teams that are playing. Um, it's probably more attacking focus than defensive focus, um, the NPC. Um, and it's, it plays a big part in New Zealand rugby because it's uh, how old Super Rugby 21 years old now, where uh, NPC, like we had our 100th year last year for Waikato, so uh, it's a very traditional thing in New Zealand. Um, there's a lot more tribal um, supporters um, uh, and fan base uh, with NPC because you could, you could support um, Waikato but you could be a Hurricanes fan. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those those things that's always been in, in New Zealand. And it's a very, I guess, uh, more deep-rooted than the uh, Super Rugby. No, yeah, that's fair. I think Harv, who asked the question earlier, was um, he wants the NPC to almost take over from Super Rugby. So you've got a bigger player pool then for All Black Selection. Um, I can't remember the exact way you described it, but it was basically NPC instead of Super Rugby. You've got a bigger player pool. You've got more games. And then at the end of the NPC season, you can go, right, the best from this lot will fit into the Super Rugby franchise teams. Mm-hmm. And do that, yeah, well, that's, uh, do that way. When I first started, that's how it happened. So you'd play NPC, um, mm. and then they will have, a, I think, they'll pick a a Chiefs team, maybe 26 players, and then the rest go into a draft. Um, so you're playing for a spot every every year, you're playing for a Super Rugby spot. But we're now guys sign three, four-year contracts with a, with a Super Rugby team. And that's just the way that professional footy's gone um, in sports. So, um, you know, we, New Zealand had opportunity um, when COVID hit to to trial the um, stacked NPC by putting all the All Blacks into the NPC and then seeing how that went. Um, and unfortunately, they went with the, I guess, they wanted to have a Super Rugby model, which is all good. Um, but this, yeah, NPC and, and club rugby is, is the grassroots of, of New Zealand rugby. And it's what makes the All Blacks strong, what makes New Zealand strong. So, um, you know, it's always going to play a massive, massive role with, uh, with the New Zealand. I love that. And I love how passionate you are about the NPC as well. It gives me a nice warm feeling inside. When, people, when we have guests that are passionate about rugby, it makes my job a lot easier because I'm passionate yeah, yeah, yeah. about it as well. So. It, it makes it so much easier. And um, we have got another question from a co-host from Cam this time. He's asked, what's harder to train for? Is rugby harder or is boxing harder to train for? Ooh, uh, tough question because it's, it's totally different sports. Mm. Um, like I've only really fully dived into boxing for the last couple of years. And so I'm just learning. I'm just a, a beginner. I'm just a sponge taking it all in. Um, but I'm yeah, working my ass off to, uh, to stay fit because... The last place you want to be in a ring is unfit um, against an opponent that's yeah coming to take your head off. So um, most of my boxing sessions are pretty grueling and, and tough. And I guess with boxing, you're sort of training to peak for a fight maybe eight or six weeks away. But with rugby, you've got to sort of stay at a level uh, the whole time. You, know, you can go up or you can come down, but you can't go too high. You can't come too low. You sort of got to stay, stay with it. But I will say boxing has definitely helped uh, with with my rugby this year, especially um, our first game. Actually, we went to uh, sudden death, went to extra time, and ended up bloody playing ninety minutes for my first game back in the year. Um, and I just put that back down to um, 
put that down to my, my boxing training and working on that Kubota diesel engine that I talked about. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it's just too hard to, there's two different total sports yeah, and good. one goes for the whole year and one goes for eight, ten weeks. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. We've got another training question, actually. There's been a lot of questions coming in about, because your work ethic, so everyone knows how hard you work. Ailey has asked, what is the hardest game you had to prep for and why? Hardest game you had to prep for? Ooh. Man, that's a, that's a hard question. Um, I try and keep my preparation the same every time I play. So it doesn't matter who the opposition is. I, you know, I've got my set of standards and um, my values and the way I, I want to play. So I, my preparation needs to be the same each, every week. And it's okay if, if it doesn't, you know, doesn't look exactly the same as it did the week before. I just know I have a process that I need to get to um, to prepare for myself for Saturday. Um, and yeah, they, I, nothing comes to my mind where I think of this was a hard team to, to prepare for, to get ready for, because when you're in the All Blacks, it's easy to, to get up yourself mentally um, and whatnot. Um, same with with, um, with Super Rugby. You sort of know what teams you're playing, especially if you're playing a derby game. You know, you're going to get up for that. So it is not one game that sort of sticks out in my mind, just thinking, oh man, this was a hard one to, to sort of prepare for. I sort of have my routine and how I prepare and, and go through the process and um, yeah, make sure that it gets done so I can just perform and, and enjoy myself come Saturday because that's why we play. Well, that's why I still play the game, so I love it. Um, so as, as long as I can get my process and my preparation right, then I can go out there and, and have fun. That's spot on. Do you have any like pre-match rituals or anything? Like you need to do this, this or what? Yeah, it's a weird one. Um, I always uh, have to have a bowl of oats or porridge. I don't know what you guys call it. Oh. Porridge, oats, oatmeal. What do you guys call it? Oats? Depends what company it is. There's porridge, there's yeah, porridge. Yeah. There's oatmeal. We yeah, have porridge. a <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's something I've, I've always had, like, it's legit being 20 years of porridge before every single game. And if, if I don't get my porridge, then I usually don't freak out or I don't, you know, I'm not into superstitions and stuff like that, but I'm just yeah. like, got to find my porridge somehow. So, if we, if we go away, get to a hotel, I might ask the um, kitchen if they got porridge. If they haven't, then I, I'll duck off down to like a, a supermarket and get some of those quick and easy ones. And as long as I get a bit of oats, then. That's fair. Yeah, That's fair. Just not, I don't do porridge. <laughs> There's a stupid reason why. I've never actually tried this stuff, but. Oh, really? Two, two members of my family have like ate it in front of me, and it's just very off putting. And the age range was totally different. So, like, we had my little boy when we were trying to get him onto like proper food. We got him on porridge, and obviously it's dribbling down the chin. It's all over. The <laughs> Same with my granddad years ago. Like my granddad would eat porridge like, every morning, and he'd eat it, and he'd like try and rush because we did uh, like, go out for something to do for the day, and he'd mess, and it. Oh, I was like, oh, no, it's disgusting. <laughs> it proper took me off the stuff. <laughs> nah, it's, it's good. That's good stuff. Good fuel for the for the diesel engine. For the diesel engine, <laughs> yeah, yes. probably. I think it's come from uh, the Siemens actually. Like uh, that used to be, you know, we always had to have porridge or whatnot, or like pretty basic bland food with titch. And then uh, three days before tournament, we weren't allowed to eat any red meat. Um, playing Siemens, but uh, for some reason, titch says it doesn't. You know, you can't eat it before a game or tournament because it doesn't digest whatever. But that's like it stuck with me all these years. Um, even to the point, I think, like, maybe last week was, like, my first time I had, like, red meat before a game or something like that. <laughs> like, it's just real weird how it's sort of those sort of, like, little things that Titch has, has done. Um, we hated it back then. It still sort of sticks with us to this day. <laughs> it's weird that it sticks with you for that long, though. Just something that, that simple, like, you can't eat red meat before, before a game. How did you prepare for, like, like in a seventh tournament? Obviously, you could be on first in the day and then you're not on till late at night so like what do you do during the day where you're not playing yeah i think it's uh or what, what we do is we switch up completely and um, we get the music out uh, the music comes out pretty quickly um after a game and um, recover have a bit of fun joke around um have a little bit of a sleep some of our fijian boys in our team would have a sleep 
but I think that's that really helped me pay the way during my career where I could sort of have that boots on switch on mentality because mm. uh, you can't in sevens you can't be on the whole day because you just do yourself you do your head and just yeah. trying to stay on and stay focused and stay engaged for the whole days you have to learn to put your boots on switch on when your boots come off you just completely relax joke around laugh sing get the music out boots come back on boom you know you have yeah. to do that three times a day um six times during the, the weekend or competition so um that sort of gave me a good oh, you know that's all, something i'm really good at um now you know where i can just put my boots on walk across the, the paint painted line and, and be switched on um but you can see it in 15s where some guys can't you know they can't go from one to the other yeah um so yeah that, that's something that's, that's really important in settings that um all teams do it now um you know, New Zealand was the first, well, not the first, but, you know, you used to get the ghetto blasters out and, you know, play music and have a laugh and not and other teams sort of see thinking you're, you know, taking the piss or not taking things seriously, but it's just actually switching off and being able to switch off and, um, and not worry about it until you had to put those boots back on. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. And I, I agree with the thought that you can't, especially for sevens, you can't be game focused the whole day because you will, you'll go insane. Yeah, yeah, no, you will. <laughs> um, obviously, it's just it has just finished. What was your thoughts on the whole World Cup sevens? I actually uh, just saw. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't actually watch. But I just seen the results, and I seen our, our two teams, the Black Friends and the Sevens Men's, uh, just lost in the, in the final. Um, so you know, so Fiji won the the men's, and the Aussies won the women's. Yes. Yeah. 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 So now I'm I'm a big fan of sevens and. Um, you know, there's a lot of older statesmen in, in the New Zealand Sevens team, so yeah. um, I know they'll be hurting because, you, you know, yeah, you came second in the world, but if you don't win gold, you don't, you know, you don't win that sort of thing in, in rugby, so I'm um, one of those guys will be hurting. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a great, great game to, to watch um, as a spectator. Um, I've always, it's on my bucket list to uh, one day be able to go to the Hong Kong Tens as a, as a sport, uh, supporter. I've nice. never actually had the opportunity to be a supporter, I've always been there like three or four times and always had to be the, the entertainment <laughs> I guess for everybody. Uh, is there is the Melrose Sevens on your on your bucket list, the home of Sevens? Um no, no, it's not on my bucket list, but I did get invited to the, I think what I mean the Amsterdam Sevens. Okay, cool. Yeah, just just the you know basic club. Yeah. I think it's club. I got, I got invited from uh, one of my mates to go join their team. Um but yeah, once once the boots are done and hung up, there'll be no, no, you know, no um, fun tournaments or anything to do to, to play, or just uh, you know, walk away in the in the distance. I was just I was just going to ask what's what's next for William Messam. Yeah, now after this, this is my last year, my last season playing. Um, yeah, you know, it's been a few years to sort of I'm in mean, if I should or shouldn't give up. Um, I've asked a, a lot of questions to my friends. That have, have retired recently. Um, and they just said, you, you'll know when it's time to, to retire. As long as you don't retire too early. Uh, I've had a few guys regret that they retired too early, but um, I think you know it's time to time to, to give it up. And um, I'm just really grateful here in the Waikato that we've got a, a great group of young men coming through. Um, and hopefully I've played a part uh, where I've sort of you know had a positive impact on their career and um taken a couple of young youngsters under my wing, um, some young loose forwards coming through. Um but yeah, I'm, I'm you know happy with the decision, and my body's still good, um, and I want it to continue to stay good. I don't want to be a, a broken old man, even though I, I still walk around with a little bit of hobble. But um, yeah, I just think it's it's, a, it's the right time to sort of hang them up and and move on to the sort of next chapter of my life. I feel a bit emotional now. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I've, I've watched you grow like when I was growing up and everything, so it's, it feels weird now that. There's no more way of messing on a rugby pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's always, you know, it always comes to an end. Um, you know, I wish you could play this game forever, but um, we can't. I've, I've been fortunate enough to be doing it for 20 years. Um, uh, not a lot of players get the opportunity to be able to do that. So it's, uh, you know, it's given me a, a good life and I've taken massive learnings and lessons uh, from playing this game and the sport and what a lot to owe the sport. Um and just because I'm, you know, stepping off the footy field doesn't mean I won't have an involvement somewhere. Um, yeah. Where that is, I'm not sure just yet. 
But uh, yeah, I love this game. That's why I keep playing it to this this, this day. Definitely not playing for money. <laughs> um, uh, so you know, I'm, I'm definitely you know my heart's still there. Um, but yeah, there'll, there'll be somewhere where I can sort of still chip in and help out. Well, I, I definitely... without smashing my body, that's the key. That's the key word. Not without smashing my body. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, obviously, you've played with some of the best to ever grace the field. What's your dream? Actually, we'll do we'll do both because you played seven as well. What is your dream back row partners? So there's you, and then two others, past and present. You don't have to have played with them. Just people you admired or or played with, whatever. And then your dream sevens team, past and present. Oh, my dream Louis Fortune. I'm on, I'm on it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here and yeah. If you want to be, okay, you I'll, can I'll, I'll, put my, I'll put myself on the bench. Um, <laughs> man, would have to be Michael Jones and uh, Jerome Kano. Okay. Would be, uh, yeah, just because um, I grew up with Jerome playing a lot of footy with him. Yeah. Uh, we sort of started at the same time. He obviously retired a couple of years ago, but um, yeah, going for a lot of. Rugby with uh, Jerome and obviously Michael Jones was my uh, childhood hero growing up. So uh, the opportunity to, to play with him would have been unreal. Yeah. Um, my sevens team, uh, Jonah Lomu. Of course. So it's that. Uh, Eric Rush. He's an absolute legend. I'm just getting all Kiwis here. That's fine. <laughs> That's oh, good. Yeah. Um, man. DJ Forbes would have to be in there. Oh, so good. He's a, le- he's a legend. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this guy, uh, Masio Valance. Um, he played when I was played. He was an absolute magician. Um, Fiji had Serevi, but we had uh, Masio Valance. We I'm called him Muji. I'm better with faces. For the, for yeah, the most part. I, I think his other, his other name was, Fijians have so many names. His other name was uh, Masio Raoma, I think. Um, he, was, he was a magician. Like I would put him... Up there with uh, Waisali Sarebi. Um, that's, that's how, how good he was. Um, there was. Christian Cullen definitely have to be in there. He was an absolute gun. He was absolutely, yeah. Um, oh, can't forget the old mate Carl Tanana. I was just going to say, you're going to mention KT or? <laughs> yeah, KT. KT was, yeah, he was one of my uh, leaders um, when I was first in the sevens. Um, And Josh Tulsova, actually. There you go. There you go. You have Jonah on one side and Josh Tulsova on the other side. Good luck. You're not stopping that. Not, nobody's getting stopped. No, nah, and you got a couple of diesel engines, Kubota diesel engines just chucking up the middle. <laughs> no, that's just not... That's that's almost cheating, in a way. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. The reason I had to mention, like, if you're going to say uh, KT, is because I, I did see the video when you've got the, the signs, like the dream team. And KT was on your how the body how the got on it. Yeah. So yeah. I just thought I'd try and see if see if you remember that bit or not. Yeah, no, I didn't remember. But KT was was a uh, awesome uh, Simmons player. He had some pace from uh, back when back when he was younger when he had his uh, his dreadlocks. <laughs> Still got the dreadlocks now, isn't he? Yeah. No, now I'm more. I think about it. If I like a dream world team, there'd probably actually be a bit more, a couple more Fijians in there, I think, because those guys are absolute freaks of uh, with ball in hand. I, I don't know what it is with Fiji and Sevens. It just it works. It's awful galore. They just make it look ridiculously easy. And I'm like, I would never be able to attempt half of that. Oh, 100%. Like, I would love to coach a. Um, sevens team or even just like their the 15s team or like the the drua team that they have like yeah. their ability and their talent is um, like i played with some freakish freakish um talented rugby players in my time but one that really stands out for me too actually is Sudavini Sivivatu um played a lot of rugby from here at the Chiefs in Waikato but uh Josh Torsova I yeah. played with him in Toulon and I've never ever seen a player like catch a ball and like someone that doesn't looks like doesn't want to be there to start off with and you give him yeah. the ball and then he can run Just over run. dudes, run around you, play around with you, you know, put pig in the middle with you. Um, those two players were absolutely freaks of nature. I've never, ever seen 
But yeah, I couldn't agree any more with that. We've got one more fan question and then we're going to switch up a little bit. Um, Prop or Mug, Proper Mug has asked, what is the better quality in rugby, France or New Zealand? I'm guessing Cobb. Quality. Oh. Yeah, just different styles of rugby. Mm. Um, like I said, New Zealand of late has, has become very structured and there's a lot of systems in place um, when we're playing our rugby. Um, what I do love about the French style and what I did love when I was playing top 14 is that we don't really have, they didn't really have that structure up in, in France. They just played what they see and I think I think people call it the French flair. Yeah. Um, but the only problem with that is that you don't know what you're going to get on which day. Um, so I felt like when I was playing in France, they sort of just, maybe it was miscommunication or I didn't understand French or, or what it was, but it seemed like they just, you know, just played what they what they saw and, and just and just playing. Um, but we, I guess Super Rugby, just because the intensity and the, the pace of it, Super Rugby is a, very, is, is a lot quicker than, than Top 14. Uh, top yeah. 14 is, is a couple of notches slower. Um, probably the baguettes and the wee croissants will we'll catch out on the boys, but um, yeah, that's, that's probably the, the main difference between the, the two competitions. The, the two great competitions, like I'd love to see a, a Toulouse versus a Crusaders or a, a Blues versus, you know, Clermont or a Toulon, um, just to see actually where, where, where those those teams at, because it's two different styles of footy. Um, it'll be an awesome sort of spectacle to, to watch. I think what I said, I called it like the, like the World Club Challenge, kind of like what Rugby League does. Yeah, yeah. So I would have done it. I did this whole video on it as well. Champions Cup winner versus Super Rugby champion. Challenge Cup winner will go against the Super Rugby runner-up. And both losing finalists go against both semi-finalists. There's eight games. Yeah. I remember when um, we won the title in 2012 or 13. Um. It might have been too long, actually, or the, the team that won the top 14 that year wanted to play us um, yeah. in, in a one-off game. I think it actually was too long in Dubai. Um, and for some reason, it just didn't work out. Um, I think they wanted our All Blacks to play, but we were on holiday at the time. Yeah. Um, something like that. Um, but then I, I do remember racing Metro playing um, the Highlanders one year. Um, and I think the racing Metro boys just used it as a holiday and just drunk every day and then uh, they still ended up uh, being the Highlanders that, that day but uh, yeah I think it would be interesting sort of the concept that they could get that off the ground I don't know I think even if you do it like in the summer before the rugby championship starts because obviously the all black boys are still fit and raring to go the French boys will still be ready we'll just say French for an example the French boys will still be ready to go because their season's just finished so instead of pre-season do a game that matters. I know that sound, I might not sound that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Pre-season's the only thing is with that is it's like, um, it's real hard. So when teams come down here to New Zealand to play us like the French or the English, whatever, that's the, they're at the end of their season. Hmm. So they've had almost a year of footy. So, and we're sort of in the half, halfway mark of ours. Um, and you're sort of tired, fatigued, whatnot. You've had a long season. You know, the end's coming. And then vice versa, when we head up there and... November, I think the, yeah. the tour has happened. We're sort of at the end of our season, a long season. You know, it gets a bit long and a bit draining, a bit tired and fatigued. And then you're sort of getting the best of the Northern Hemisphere when they're in November because it's sort of halfway in their year. So yeah. it would be good somehow to sort of marry both competitions you know, up like the league, the league do. Um, but who knows, mate? It's way above our paychecks. I know. I don't go bad enough to, to make those decisions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just, I just want you to quickly talk to me about your Maori heritage and like how important the Maori All Blacks actually is. I know how important it is, but I don't think many people get the gist. Yeah, well, it's, it's massively important, um, not just for New Zealand rugby, but for our own, you know, young Maori rugby players because um, some of these places they don't have All Blacks. Um, they see the Maori All Blacks as the All Blacks and. Just because those guys are, you know, some fire to burn to sort of achieve what they want to achieve, and um, 
it's gone it's gone bigger from rugby now where we can actually promote our culture on a bigger stage. Um, like the last, I don't know, five, six years, whatever the model blacks always traveled over to Europe or South America or America. I mean, that's great for our culture that we get to um, promote our culture out um, to the world. I know yeah. AIG were massive fans of um, of of the Māori All Blacks, and they are a massive sponsor to to the Māori All Blacks, and getting a lot of those tours up and running, and and getting to what what they got to. Um, and then we get to I talked about the French flair. Um, you know, you also heard about the Māori flair where you go out there and get to express yourself with the ball, but also without the ball because. Um, a lot of people sort of throw that terminology around it's about Māori flair, Māori rugby, where the ball gets a lot of airtime and everyone's sort of just um, expressing themselves and having a go. But it's also without the balls, you know, it's a, an opportunity to, you know, to show yourself physically and, and get, get stuck in. And, um, you know, we come from a line of warriors. So, you know, that sort of battle is in, yeah. in our DNA and uh, we get to go out there and, yeah, express it. Through a game of rugby, which is which is awesome, and again, like go back to the culture, we get to um, show the world our culture through the way we play, but also through through the haka, through the, the jersey that you have on there, and showing you know what what we're all about. I love that. Rugby's the last. Well, when you were playing, rugby was like the last thing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was it had nothing to do with rugby when I was uh, first in the Māori All Blacks. Um, it was all about who we are as people. Um, Learning the culture because uh, half of the team um, probably never been on Marae or learned where they come from. So it's all about connecting um, the players back to where they come from and, and to the land. And um, I think the unique thing about the Māori All Blacks is that we're all connected through blood anyway. So it's, yeah. it's really easy to, to, to gel us, to, to, to bring us together as a team because we're all connected. But um, the beauty of it is that you get to see people um, take this whole journey about learning about themselves, about where they come from. Um, learning waiata, haka, um, learning tikanga, like learning everything it is to be a Māori, learning Māori food. Um, and it's just, it's real awesome to see. And then, like, you see guys that are real shy, um, might not even call themselves, I don't know, a Māori or whatever. When you come, they come out of the campaign, they're fully into it and, you know, they can't wait for the next one. And what I loved about it was that you come off a, a real intense super rugby campaign mm. and you go into a Māori campaign and you just like, you could just go and go in there, be you, um, and just yeah, just have fun with it. And and, and I think that's why New Zealand Māori team had been so successful um, over the years is because because of that. Um, rugby was the last thing we we're playing for something a lot bigger um, than than a game of rugby. Um, and I believe anyway, if you have that in any culture, any team, um, you gotta you know you're gonna go a long long way. Yeah, I love the way you've put that. And I generally can't add any more to that if I tried. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna try. We're gonna switch up now. We're gonna go to get to know we are messing. So it's more just about you as a person. Nothing really rugby related at all, or boxing related. <laughs> so, what is your favorite post match drink? My favorite post match my post match drink is uh, kava. Um, I'm a big fan of kava. Um, taste yuck. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like the way it just you know relaxes my, my body and pretty sore after a game. Um, but it's just a great way for me just to sit down with, with my mates and and just yeah unwind on on around a bowl of cover. Fair enough. What's your social drink then when you're out with the boys? Oh no, I'm not I'm not much of a, a big big drinker. Um, oh okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll be. Yeah, probably cover. That's why I'm a big cover drinker. <laughs> yeah. Favorite film. Favorite film. Oh, I am a big, 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 big fan of Friday. Oh, the, Friday. The ice, we just took our nice cube thing. Yeah, I pretty much know all the one liners. Um, go on then. You've set yourself up. <laughs> 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 I can't do it. Can't do it. Fair enough. Um, favorite song or favorite like music genre? Ooh, favorite genre would probably have to be New Zealand reggae. Okay, uh, New Zealand reggae is different different to, to reggae. Um, we've got our own little flavor and and style down here in New Zealand. It's pretty catchy. Um, favorite songs, yeah. No, I've, I've got too many. I've got way too many favorite songs. 
I do like a good old karaoke now and then. Oh, what's your, what's your karaoke song, man? Oh, no. It's, it's, again, it's like time. It's times. So, like... What's, what's one that... Frank, Sinatra, Frank Sinatra's about? probably my, my go-to. Frank Sinatra? Frank Sinatra. My way. Yeah. That's probably my my oh. go-to. Classic. <laughs> Are you a night in or night out person? Oh, man. Depends, eh? Like, right now, it's a cold, wet day here in Hamilton, night in Hamilton. So, night in. Definitely nice. around, the, around the heat of the fire watching a uh, bit of Netflix or Disney Plus with my partner, Monique. So, yeah. what, what's your favourite thing on Netflix, then? Um, actually, we're at the moment we're watching Disney Plus and watching uh, Sons of Anarchy. Oh, um, yes. So yeah, good. I've, I've just got myself, a, got myself a Harley Davidson, so I've sort of got glued to watching. Yeah, so... I'm, I've gone full Sons of Anarchy, probably going to get my patch. Um, nah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've been, we've been watching that quite a, quite a bit lately. So. so good. It's one of my favourite shows. It's just... Oh, it draws you in, even though you've already seen it. Yeah. It's always actually... Oh, this is the first time I've seen it, so we're up to season five, I think we're up. So we a uh, couple of seasons to go. You're, you're not ready. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not. <laughs> What is your dream vacation? My dream vacation? Ooh. As in place or? Just whatever. Like, you, if we go, right, money's no obligation. You can go anywhere, any place, any style. You pick it. Man, I'd you, love to. You close your eyes and dream of, of yeah. a holiday. I'd actually like to do a bit of, uh, go into hiking um, over the last couple of years. Nice. Um, my partner Monique so um, she's, she's a big hiker and she's got me into it so I'd love to really see New Zealand a bit more um, but also maybe like Colorado or somewhere like that nice somewhere where you know bit of, bit of hiking bit of probably just yeah. mountain just, just get away from the world and get in there and but then come back out and just yeah you know, enjoy, enjoy it yeah no that's fair yeah. I like that Cats or dogs? Uh, well, a few stray cats here that I don't like, so probably dogs. I'm still waiting for a person to proper out and out says cats. <laughs> <laughs> it's never happened, but it's one of them ones you just get, like, you get a nice little ball roll and things. Oh, my, one of my good mates is uh, a big cat fan, and I could get him on here and he'll tell you how much he loves his cat. It's on his Instagram page every bloody day, so. Who is it? Oh, it's my mate Matt. He's not. He's not a regular player. He's just. Uh, All right. Okay. Just, just, loves his cats. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, what's your biggest pet peeve? Man, I'm a pretty crazy guy. Not not a lot pisses me off. Um, probably maybe just mess. Like if you make a mess, like just clean it up. You know, like it's not that yeah. hard. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's like especially that's um at, at Waikato, the boys we get given like. A little snack thing and there'll be like muesli bars or something yeah someone will like get the last muesli bar but leave mm. the box on the table um, and the rubbish bin's right there and i'm just like it's like when you finish the milk but put the carton back in the fridge oh <laughs> it's so just like come on eh? that's that's just common sense so that's i'm sort of common like, sense. the more you the more you think about it I'm like, why not just do that yeah 100 percent um, the best advice you were ever given? Best advice I was ever given? Um, <laughs> man, what is the best advice I've ever given? I've had, a, I've had a few people give me advice on life um, and on footy. Um, one that sticks out, uh, Eric Rush said to me pretty young um, that it's only one man's opinion. Um, so I missed out on uh, one of me New Zealand under 19s. I was playing sevens at the time and he pulled me aside. I was pretty gutted and he just, yeah, just said it was one man's opinion. Um, so that that one, that sort of sticks out to me. Um, but also um, we're hard work and taking. Oh, yeah. So now, yeah, you have to earn what you get given. So You've, you've definitely earned what you've been given. So don't worry about that. 
Um, favorite cuisine, like food cuisine, style of food. Oh, I reckon Asian. Go on, Asian what's, your, what's your go-to? What's your go-to meal? Oh, my go-to meal. I do like a good curry, like a green curry, Thai curry. Um, but spicy. A ramen. A ramen is good if you can find a good ramen. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like I'm missing out on so much nice food. Just, <laughs> I can't laugh, Too much into your haggis, mate. Haggis is not bad. I don't like a lot of it. There's just a lot. Of, like, <laughs> some dishes slather over it and it's quite nice, but then if you put too much, it's like it's too overpowering. But I, I do recommend it. It's, it's quite nice. Don't don't let the stories and the origins scare you off. Yeah, yeah. Then like the stories and origins of where it comes from. <laughs> I've lost my place now. <laughs> Favorite pizza topping. Favorite pizza topping. Ooh, just the humble cheese. Fair, fair. Can't cheese. go wrong with the classic. Nah. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No, no, no. Yeah. Any time a pineapple, any time pineapple should be warm as uh, off a barbecue. No, when you have me on a barbecue. <laughs> no, this takes a weird turn. I've noticed this every time I'm doing Southern Hemisphere interviews. Most will be like, yeah, yeah, pineapple on pizza, but then they'll be like, pineapple on hamburgers, and I'm like, what? No. <laughs> But, You're not on a pizza, but or on a on a, on a, on a, or on a, a burger, but straight off a barbecue with the, like how they do it on the uh, what are they, Brazilian barbecues. Fair. Go. I'm gonna have to try it because I'm not guess we've had this tell me to just stick it on and slap it and have a have a go then might have to give it a go eventually. And <laughs> one thing that you have to do but you hate doing it. Uh, washing. Yeah. Uh, it's honestly, I... Man, if I was rich, I would have just someone to come to my house to do my washing. Oh, wash it, fold it for me. I just, man. I even want... I don't know what it is. I just hate it. I just hate washing. That's, yeah. I mean, food shopping, for me. I hate going to a supermarket. I don't know what it is. But there's times, like, I'll drive... My fiance there, and she's like, Are you coming on? I'm like, nope. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll sit and wait. I'll, I'll help you put the shopping in the car, but don't let me go in. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like people standing in the aisles chatting, like blocking everyone else, or just people trying to push in queue. I don't know what it is. It's just, I, no, don't make me go food shopping. I'll go re- actual like shopping. I don't mind shopping properly, like clothes shopping. Yeah, and, yeah. And all, but no, don't let me go to a supermarket. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Waikato or Toulon? Oh, wait, sorry. Waikato or Toulon? Oh, well, as a like, gonna put something around that, bro. Some anything. Best night out. Best food, best experience. Oh, best well, like Hamilton, Hamilton and well, Waikato gets a, a bad rep, but that's my home now. I've been here for 20 years, so um, I'll always be here. Um, the south of France is a hard place to beat, though. That's, that's so I want to sit on the fence here. Yeah. Uh, no, that's fine. I, I always, because it's, it's obviously played for more than one team, so it's, it's just like one of those ones to catch people off guard. Yeah, yeah. Oh, as, so, as a team, if you say rugby, definitely Waikato, but talking about lifestyle place to live totally. you know, I'd sit on the fence so if you could get Chiefs rugby in this in the place of Toulon in the south of France and in the Mediterranean now we're talking perfect Jerome Kaino or Richie McCall same thing I put some content around this but <laughs> what know. are we doing are we, <laughs> <laughs> are we playing I'll, rugby I'll here or are we off guard with it <laughs> You're, you're too nice, so <laughs> we're not getting any of it. Um, final question. One thing you want to be remembered for? One thing. I 
Um, well, just uh, I was a good person. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's probably it. Just uh, you are definitely a good person. I could vouch for that now. A good person. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And Lucas Shop, you've absolutely crushed it, Liam. You've absolutely thanks, brother. Just thank you so much for agreeing to come on. It's been an absolute blast. And it has been an absolute dream as well, because like I said, you were one that I looked up to. And I had I had like a weirdness. Obviously, like Richie and Dan and all that you look up to, but then like yourself, Richard Cahoo and all that, like I'm like, no, you're like you're up there with them for me as well. <laughs> so getting to actually do this, it's I'm trying not to like freak out. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh my god, oh, it's it's all good, <laughs> but no, thank you so much for agreeing to come on. No, my uh, pleasure, bro. You're stuck with me now. Every guest becomes a friend for life, so yeah, you're, you're stuck with me now. Awesome. Well, next time I'm up there, we'll come. I don't know if you eat over haggis or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say we'll go for a drink, but you're not a big drinker, so it might have to be go for the haggis or, go for or, a haggis. or something. You could even take. Maybe bring over some hangy. I don't know what it is, but I'll have to try it. You need to do it. Do it, um, do it at your backyard. It's easy. Is it just a barbecue? Under the ground. But yeah, you could easily do it at I'm home. Because we've got grass. And we just set fire to everything. No, you put it under the grass. Under the in the dirt. Wait, what? Google YouTube and I guarantee you better do it in, in your home. Okay, or somewhere around I'll, you. I'll definitely check. We're gonna leave. We'll leave on that. I'm gonna Google how to hang in Scotland. Yeah. And and I'll message you about it. So there you go. Yeah. You just get those uh, little railway sleepers. Are probably the best thing. The iron ones, the little ones. You just heat those up and then cook with those. You're away, mate. Sorted. Sorted. Holland's first hangy. You can invite it just to make sure I've done it properly. <laughs> I need to prove. I need. I need proper Maori proof approval for that. Yeah, no, there's, there'll be a few up there. <laughs> Love it. We'll, we'll end it on that. We'll end it on that. This has been the final whistle with Liam Messon, and we will see you next time.